We've come today to share with you the words that the Holy Spirit has for the churches. Words spoken by the Holy Spirit? Please go ahead. Almighty God says, Eventually, all nations shall be blessed because of my words and also smashed to pieces because of my words. In this way, all people during the last days shall see that I am the Savior returned. I am the Almighty God that conquers all of mankind. Amen. The Word of God is the Word of God. Despite not knowing the truth or knowing God, when we hear God's Word, we feel different. I want everyone to hear the voice of God. Amen. Amen. We'll be able to conduct our meeting so safely this time really and shouldn't, shouldn't have to worry. Brothers and sisters, we must listen to the voice of God with our heart and spirit, like two minds thinking alike. The words of God are the truth. They have power and authority. Those with heart and spirit can definitely feel it. Yes, that's, that's true. That's true. To be here with you. Yeah. Many people, after reading the words of Almighty God, affirm they are in fact God's voice and His words. Right. These words voice. sound so practical. Having heard the words of this Almighty God, I have the same feeling. Amen. Every time God becomes flesh, He comes to do a stage of work, unlike the prophets who, via God's direction, just transmit a few words in a particular context. When God incarnates to do a stage of work, He must speak many words. He must utter many truths, revealing mysteries and speaking prophecies. This may take years or even decades to complete. Yeah. For example, in doing the work of redemption, the Lord Jesus preached, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand, and taught man how to confess, how to repent, forgive, endure, and how to suffer and bear one's cross, and everything that constituted the way of man in the age of grace. He displayed God's disposition of love and mercy, and revealed the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven and the conditions under which we enter it. It was only in His crucifixion, His resurrection, and His ascension to heaven that God's work of redemption was completed. The words uttered by the Lord Jesus are all the truth that God has gifted mankind in His work of redemption. And now, Almighty God has come and uttered the truth that cleanse and save man. He has done the work of judgment starting with the house of God and revealed to mankind His disposition with righteousness as its core. He unfolded the great mysteries of His 6,000-year management plan. He has opened up the age of kingdom and brought to an end the age of grace. The words of Almighty God are the natural outpourings of the essence of God's life and the expression of His disposition. This is an entire stage of the work that God is doing in the last days to thoroughly cleanse and save mankind. Amen. 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 Brothers and sisters, let's read some more words of Almighty God and hear for ourselves the words are the truth spoken in God's voice, okay? Okay. okay? okay. Almighty God says, When God becomes flesh this time, His work is to express His disposition primarily through chastisement and judgment. Using this foundation, He brings more truth to man and shows more ways of practice and so achieves His objective of conquering man and saving man from his corrupt disposition. This is what lies behind the work of God in the age of kingdom. Amen. Amen. I'll read this part. Okay. Almighty God says, in the last days, Christ uses a variety of truths to teach man, expose the essence of man, and dissect his words and deeds. These words comprise various truths, such as man's duty, how man should obey God, how man should be loyal to God, how man ought to live out the normal humanity, as well as the wisdom and the disposition of God, and so on. These words are all directed at the essence of man and his corrupt disposition. In particular, those words that expose how man spurns God are spoken in regard to how man is an embodiment of Satan and an enemy force against God. 
In undertaking his work of judgment, God does not simply make clear the nature of man with just a few words. He exposes, deals with, and prunes it over a very long time. These various methods of exposing and dealing and also pruning cannot be substituted with ordinary words, but with the truth that mankind does not possess at all. Only methods of this kind are deemed judgment. Only through judgment of this kind can man be subdued and thoroughly convinced into submission to God and, moreover, gain true knowledge of God. What the work of judgment brings about is man's understanding of the true face of God and the honest truth about his own rebelliousness. The work of judgment allows man to gain much understanding of the will of God and also of the real purpose of God's work and of the mysteries that are incomprehensible to him. It also allows man to recognize and know his corrupt substance and the roots of his corruption, as well as to discover the ugliness of man. These effects are all brought about by the work of judgment, for the substance of this work is actually the work of opening up the truth, the way, and the life of God to all those who have faith in Him. Amen. Amen. This work is the work of judgment done by God. Amen. 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 God's mm -hmm. word sounds yes, so clear. God will so use powerful. truth to do his work of judgment no. after right. all. This isn't all what I imagined. I hear him in my head. Please turn to page 932. I'll read a passage too. Good. Almighty God says, The last days have arrived. All things will be classed by their kind and will be divided into different categories based on their nature. This is the time when God reveals people's outcome and their destination. If people do not undergo chastisement and judgment, then there will be no way of revealing their disobedience and unrighteousness. Only through chastisement and judgment can the end of all things be revealed. Man only shows his true colors when he is chastised and judged. Evil shall return to evil, Good shall return to good, and people shall be classified according to their kind. Through chastisement and judgment, the end of all things will be revealed. So evil will be punished and good rewarded, and all people will become subject under the dominion of God. All the work must be achieved through righteous chastisement and judgment. Because man's corruption has reached its peak, and his disobedience has been too serious, only God's righteous disposition, which is principally one of chastisement and judgment is revealed in the last days, can fully transform and complete man. Only this disposition can expose evil and thus severely punish all the unrighteous. During the last days, only righteous judgment can classify man and bring man into a new realm. In this way, the entire age is ended through God's righteous disposition of judgment and chastisement. Amen. 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 Thank God I could be here. Thank you for fellowshipping with me. Brothers and sisters, let's watch another video reading of God's words. Great. Great. Good. Do you understand now what is judgment and what is truth? If you have understood, then I exhort you to submit obediently to being judged. Otherwise, you shall never have the opportunity to be commended by God or to be brought by Him into His kingdom. Those who only accept judgment but can never be purified, that is, those who flee in the midst of the work of judgment, shall forever be detested and rejected by God. Their sins are more numerous and more grievous than those of the Pharisees, for they have betrayed God and are rebels against God. Such men who are not worthy even to do service shall receive more severe punishment, a punishment that is moreover everlasting. God shall not spare any traitor who once evinced loyalty with words 
but then betrayed him. Men like these shall receive retribution through punishment of the spirit, soul, and body. Is this not precisely a revelation of the righteous disposition of God? Is this not God's purpose in judging man and revealing him? God consigns all those who perform all kinds of wicked deeds during the time of judgment to a place infested with evil spirits, letting these evil spirits destroy their fleshly bodies at will. Their bodies give off the stench of corpses, and such is their fitting retribution. God writes down in their record books each and every one of the sins of those disloyal false believers, false apostles, and false workers. Then, when the time is right, he casts them amidst the unclean spirits, letting these unclean spirits defile their entire bodies at will, so that they may never be reincarnated and never again see the light. Those hypocrites who did service at one time, but are unable to remain loyal to the end, are numbered by God among the wicked, so that they walk in the counsel of the wicked and become part of their disorderly rabble. In the end, God shall annihilate them. God casts aside and takes no notice of those who have never been loyal to Christ or dedicated any effort and shall annihilate them all in the change of ages. They shall no longer exist on earth, much less gain passage into the kingdom of God. Those who have never been sincere to God but are forced by circumstance into dealing with Him perfunctorily are numbered among those who do service for His people. Only a small number of such men can survive while the majority shall perish along with those who are not qualified even to do service. Finally, God shall bring into his kingdom all those who are of the same mind as God, the people and the sons of God, as well as those predestined by God to be priests. Such is the distillate obtained by God through his work. As for those who are unable to fall into any of the categories set by God, they shall be numbered among the unbelievers, and you can surely imagine what their outcome shall be. I have already said to you all that I should say. The road that you choose shall be your decision to make. What you should understand is this. The work of God never waits for any that cannot keep pace with him, and the righteous disposition of God shows no mercy to any man. Amen. 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 Thanks be to God. I'm so happy we got to watch that. Yeah. The words of Almighty God explain the judgment work of the last days so clearly. Yes. Yeah. We can see the work of God. It's so practical. Thank God. If we hadn't read the words of God Almighty, we'd still be waiting for judgment at the great white throne in the That's sky. That's for sure. We used to imagine God's judgment work in the last days as being very supernatural, without any real application. Yes. Yes. It appears Almighty God's words have been the voice of God. Otherwise, who could reveal the mysteries of the last day's work of God? You are right. Today we've heard the voice of God and received God's judgment of the last days. This was incredibly lucky. Yes. 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 Yeah, I never imagined in my wildest dreams. Brothers and sisters, after reading those words, isn't it so much clearer how God's judgment in the last days will work? I think yes. so. Yes. Sure. Yes. Yes. Thanks be to God. If God did not reveal and state this openly, how could we have any insight? There's no, I have way. no insight without God's help. In the last days, Almighty God speaks the truth and does His work of judgment. His words reveal the essence and true state of mankind's corruption. They completely expose every manifestation of man's resistance to God and satanic disposition. And they demonstrate God's unoffendable disposition of holiness and righteousness. People have therefore seen the appearance and work of God and have turned toward God one after another and have accepted God's salvation. Wow, Almighty God expresses truth to judge people 
and first implements judgment and chastisement through his words upon believers in God, and exposes the essence of these people in religious circles who profess belief but resist God. Let us see how the words of Almighty God explain it. Very good. good. Almighty God says, Man looks up to me in heaven above and devotes particular concern to my existence in heaven. Yet there is still no one who cares about me in the flesh. For I who live among man am simply too insignificant. Those who only seek compatibility with the words of the Bible and who only seek compatibility with a vague God are a wretched sight to me. That is because what they worship are dead words and a God that is capable of giving them untold treasures. What they worship is a God that lays himself at the mercy of man and which doesn't exist. What then can such people gain from me? Man is simply too lowly for words. Those who are against me those who make limitless demands of me, who have no love of the truth, who are rebellious toward me, how could they be compatible with me? I'll continue reading. Mm -hmm. Almighty God says, Your hearts are completely filled full with evil, betrayal, and also deceit. And that being so, how many impurities are there in your love? You think that you could have already sacrificed enough for me, and you think that your love for me can possibly be already enough. But then why do your words and actions carry with them rebellion and deceit? You follow me, yet you do not acknowledge my word. Is this considered love? You follow me, yet then cast me aside. Is this considered love? You follow me, yet you are mistrustful of me. Is this considered love? You follow me, yet you cannot accept my existence. Is this considered love? You follow me, yet you do not treat me as befits who I am, and you make things difficult for me at every turn. Is this considered love? You follow me, yet you try to fool me and deceive me in every matter. Is this considered love? You serve me, yet you do not fear me. Is this considered love? You oppose me in all respects and all things. Is this considered love? You have sacrificed much, it is true, yet you have never practiced what I require of you. Can this be considered love? Careful reckoning shows that there is not the slightest hint of love for me within you. After so many years of work and all the many words I have supplied, how much have you actually gained? Does this not merit a careful look back? The purpose of your faith in God is to use God in order to fulfill your aims. Is this not further a fact of your offense against the disposition of God? You believe in the existence of the God in heaven, but deny that of the God on earth. However, I do not approve of your views. I commend only those men who keep their feet on the ground and serve the God on earth. But I will never commend those people who never acknowledge the Christ who is on earth. No matter how loyal such men are to the God in heaven, in the end, they will not escape my hand that punishes the wicked. These men are the wicked. They are the wicked ones who oppose God, and they have never gladly submitted to Christ. Of course, their number includes all those who do not know and further do not acknowledge Christ. People who have been corrupted all live in the trap of Satan. They live in the earthly flesh, live in selfish desires, and there is not a single one among them who is compatible with me. There are those who say that they are compatible with me, but who all worship vague idols. 
Although they acknowledge my name is holy, they tread a path that runs contrary to me. And their words are full of arrogance and ego. Because, at the root, they are all against me, and also incompatible with me. We have been going the wrong way. Yes, okay. they are against the Almighty right God path. and incompatible with the Almighty God. Find the Almighty God. Brothers and sisters, we recognize from the judgment of Almighty God's words our own conceit, our self-importance, and our deceit in every respect. We betray our satanic disposition. Though we may endure great hardship and pay the price for God, we do not have authentic submission toward God, and even less do we have authentic love for Him. When trials and tribulations come, we may even complain about God and suspect God and deny God. This allows us to recognize that we are deeply corrupted with a satanic nature. Yes, it does. If our satanic nature and our disposition cannot attain purification, there will be no way to achieve authentic submission or authentic love for God. Yes, we are so corrupt. In the past, we thought that because we believed in God for years, had made the right sacrifices and worked hard for God, that we had then become good and were people who submitted to God. Only after experiencing the judgment and chastisement are we aware Though in outward appearance we may toil arduously for Him, we still lie and deceive God, do lip service to Him, remaining opinionated, drawing attention to ourselves and showing off. Ultimately, we realized our efforts were in fact only to gain blessing and enter the kingdom of heaven, all of which is bargaining with God. How can this be authentic submission to God? It's not even love for God. Even so, we shamelessly said we were the most God-loving, the most submissive. This is truly senseless. We don't know God at all. In the revelation and judgment of God's words, we know that God sees into everything. And we fear and tremble in our hearts when we feel His immense holiness and righteousness, and that His disposition is unoffendable. We feel that as terribly satanic as we are, we are shamed to see God, unworthy to live before Him. Then we fall down on the ground, wailing in repentance, cursing and hitting ourselves, and slapping our faces. Then we can see that we live in our satanic disposition and haven't lived like a human being at all and don't deserve to call ourselves human. Only once we've experienced many judgments, refinements, trials, prunings, and dealings, do we gradually understand some truths and see through to the truth of our corruption. At that time, we have some authentic knowledge of God and at last begin to revere God and to submit to God in our heart. This is entering the right track of faith. Only after going through God's judgment and chastisement. Thanks be, thanks to, be to God. God. Thanks, thanks be to God. The witness is so good. Yes, yes. Were it not for the judgment of the words of God, we would never have seen the true picture of our deep corruption by Satan. We would never have known the source of our sinning against and resisting God. And even less, would we know how to free ourselves from sin, to become truly obedient to God. Were it not for the strict judgment of the words of God, we could not know His righteous, majestic, and unoffendable disposition. Nor could we grow a heart that fears God. And nor could we become someone who fears God and departs from evil. This is a fact. Mm. If God didn't incarnate, who on earth could do the work of judgment in those crucial last days of the world? No, no one could. could. Who could show to man God's unoffendable, holy, and righteous disposition? No one could. No one could. Only God can do mm. this work. If God did not incarnate, whose words would have such power and authority to be able to judge us, cleanse us, to save us who have been deeply and terribly corrupted from sin? Only the words of God have such authority and yes. power. Yes. Only God can judge people and purify people. Correct. Almighty God's words and work completely show His status and identity as God. 
and they prove that he is the great creator and the appearance of the one true God. Amen. Amen. Amen.